Well this is a very old, shall we say, vintage small piece of uh, machinery which is for winding coils basically RF coils one would assume really uh, we're going to try and just run through in essence how it's constructed and how it works because otherwise you, you can't really tell just by looking at it so we're going to go in closer and just look at various little details up the top here we've got the uh, bobbin of copper wire this is 30 gauge there's a friction wheel here at the moment the setup's not ideal but we've got a spring loaded pair of arms and a little free running pulley uh, this is adjustable for the size of bobbin we can take out the support uh, bearing, shall we say, here to uh, reload that with some other wire. That's a, a screw for tightening down on the slip band. The idea being that when this goes down more and more, it puts a bit of extra friction on here. It's fairly critical, but it's a good idea and then from that pulley we go down to the main mechanism so here is the main part of the machine let's see if we can run through just quickly to give you some idea of how it works and then we'll do some different angles and get the uh, get the thing turning in fact I'll do a turn or two in a minute let's work from this side we've got a gear train here uh, we've got a primary gear secondary gear and an idler and there's a stack of gears which go from 40 to 50 teeth and the idea is you set up different sizes on the, dr the drive and the driven to get a different ratio of revolutions and I'm just winding on this is not a bobbin this is just a piece of plastic pipe so the uh, the wire is coming down to this area which is like a half pulley from there it's coming up to a little eye this is metal in fact probably a small plastic piece would be better so you don't take any enamel off the copper this arm is adjustable both for height and width that way this section here is a cam I'll zoom in in a minute and as the cam operates on this cam follower roller it makes this rear section oscillate left and right the idea being if you get the right ratio that you can pile wind uh, onto a small bobbin I the only bobbin I've got is way too small I seem to have run out there's a small one that would have to be set up on a quarter inch shaft uh, which would work actually would work quite well we could fill that up with wire and that basically is it this is adjustable that's a, a free turning center that's what puts the drive on the bobbin or whatever is there there's a pulley here which I've always assumed was to take a small drive belt if you wanted to power it from an electric motor I never tried that I don't think I'd want it to turn that fast and here we've got a spring which loads this carriage which is driven in turn I didn't mention as the cam follower goes up and down it rotates a gear here which engages in this step section and that gives you the to and fro almost everything is adjustable we've got oil holes everywhere and that basically is about it for a quick rundown this rear section there is a shorter optional piece let me see if I can bring it in I'm not going to go into much detail on this piece 
Let's see if it shows if I put it on on there. Let's check the camera. Come down a bit. That piece uh, that I've just put in the front there is, if you like, a shorter version of the tall section at the rear. I don't think it's been used very much, but the principle's the same. You'd fit a bob into the cross shaft at the top and uh, set up the side pieces for... Um, you'd use the same fittings as on the tall one. Never had to use that. So from a close-up point of view, this is the uh, gear train. As I said before, we've got a driven. It's just a simple handle, which is removable. Driven, sorry, driver, <laughs> we'll get this right. So we've got the driver gear, the driven gear, and then an idler, which is on a slotted piece, so you can adjust it to cope with two different sizes of gear. There we are. Let's uh, change angle. So we've got a slightly oblique view there. And again, let's just operate this. I'm just winding a little bit of copper wire on. I may not be quite in frame. I'm going to add a little bit of flashlight. Let's, uh, so you can see this gear. It engages in this slotted section. And the uh, cam cam follower that all rotates on this shaft and this shaft here has a flat on it so that this can be moved across there's there's so many adjustments it's actually quite perplexing at times and more or less finally just a closer look of the uh, feed area onto the bobbin or we'll call this a bobbin <laughs> although it's not um, so again we've got the free turning centre which is locked on this bar cam, cam follower and then the feed arm so let's just put a little bit more wire on there it's not set up for the diameter of the tube but you can see how things operate and that basically I think is about all we need to show That uh, optional piece that I held up earlier will take this cross piece with the pulley but everything would just operate at a lower level. I've only used this a few times over the years and used it in this configuration. The design is actually quite complex. Uh, whoever designed it did a pretty good job. There's had a slight repair. You may not see it from that angle. Let me check. No, I can't tell. Uh, anyway, this uh, oscillating piece here has had a braze repair, which was done long before I got it, and I've had this about 25 years, so it definitely goes back a long, long way. It's an inter interesting piece. It's functional. It's got very few things missing. There is a left-hand thread locating nut that probably once existed here. It doesn't affect the... Uh, it doesn't stop it working. You can see now we're piling more wire on there. Very clever machine, but also I would think quite collectible because it's uh, it's so unusual. I've never seen anything like it since or even before. So let's hope that gives you some idea of how it works and uh, probably find it a, a pretty interesting piece. It's no longer required it's taking up space, it's been in storage quite a long time uh, I've done a pretty good clean up although the casting which is quite heavy could deserve a coat of paint just to smarten it up but that's academic uh, all the metal bright metal areas are cleaned up and basically it's ready to go it takes quite a long time to set up, I'll say that much you need to do a bit of math on the gear wheels and quite a bit of adjustment on the oscillating mechanism and the distance of the 
cam and follower from the uh, pivot point of the arm lots of variables quite a challenge but actually a lovely lovely example of an old coil winding machine